Hi everyone! The previous video introduced you to neurobiology and we hope you liked this digression. Today there is a new one for you. We will talk about forestry. You will learn how to grow trees and plant forests. We are physicists and we will also study effects of the special relativity on our trees. We will boost them quite a bit. Finally, you might learn how to make good decisions. Welcome to the topic of today, boosted decision trees. Let's go through the three words one by one. Probably you know what a tree is. It is high, green and brown and it has branches, leaves and so on. A decision tree is similar. It can also be quite big, it has branches and leaves and so on. Seriously, a decision tree is a generalization of rectangular cuts. Recall that rectangular cuts select one block of the face space. A decision tree also selects cuboids, but the main difference is that it can select more of them, while cuts select just one. If the tree is huge, then the selected region of face space, consisting of blocks, can approximate a pretty complicated shape. Let's have a look at how decision trees grow. For this, we take our training Monte Carlo sample that consists of both background and signal events, and obviously we know what event is what type. The event weights are normalized, such that the sum of all background event weights is equal to 1, and in the same way for signal, the sum of all signal event weights is 1. We also need a set of variables that have some power to discriminate signal from background. As usually, we will call them discriminating variables. Now, we try to find the best cut on one discriminating variable that splits the phase space into two parts, one of which is enriched in signal and the other one in background. We loop over all discriminating variables and for each of them we test all um, possible cut values. The default in TMVA is to test 20 cut values on each variable. The best splitting is defined on the basis of a so-called splitting index. A splitting index has to be a good measure of inequality, because we want to measure the inequality of signal and background populations in each block of phase space. There are several splitting indices, like Gini index, cross-entropy, misclassification error, statistical significance and others. They all have similar performance, so let's just pick a very common one, the Gini index. For a given block of phase space with a signal purity P, the Gini index is defined by G is equal to P times 1 minus P. Recall that purity is the number of signal events in a block of phase space divided by the total number of events that are there. P is equal to the sum over J iterating over all signal events, W sub J, over sum over J iterating over all signal and background events in the block of phase space, W sub J. A low Gini index means a high inequality of signal and background events. Notice that the Gini index is symmetric in the fraction of signal events P and the fraction of background events 1 minus P. This means that we value a cut separating background as much as a cut separating signal. Back to the optimal cut. We calculate Gini indices for the parent block as well as for the two sub-blocks results of the cut. The best cut is defined as the one that yields the highest difference between Gini indices of the parent block and the daughter blocks, each weighted by the total number of events in the corresponding block. C is equal to n root times g root minus n left times g left minus n right times g right. The numbers of events are, in fact, sums of event weights. Obviously. Now we know how to split a block into two. In principle, we could keep splitting blocks until each of them contained just signal or just background events. However, 
such a decision tree would be highly overtrained. Very likely, there would be many blocks containing just one event. To avoid this, we need to define some stopping criterion that saves a block from being split. Common criteria are signal purity in the block, for example, if there are events of just one type. Minimum number of events in a block. For example, a block might be required to contain at least 5% events of the total sample. This is called a leaf node size in TMVA. Maximum number of cuts in the sequence defining the block. For example, no more than three branchings are allowed. This is called tree depth in TMVA. Whenever a block cannot be split further, it is declared as a leaf of the decision tree. The leaf is classified as a signal if the purity is above some threshold. Otherwise, it is classified as background. Most often, the output value of the decision tree is plus 1 if an event falls into a signal leaf and minus 1 if it falls to a background leaf. A less common possibility is to return purity of the leaf into which the event falls. So, we've grown our fancy decision tree. Unfortunately, decision trees are very sensitive to statistical fluctuations in the training Monte Carlo sample. If, for example, two variables have similar performance somewhere at the top of the tree, a statistical fluctuation might lead to a usage of one or the other. From that point, however, the tree trained on the fluctuated sample will evolve completely differently. As a result, its performance might be quite different. Also, decision trees are too sensitive to overtraining. If on the other hand we avoid overtraining by requiring, for example, huge leaves, then we end up with a very weak classifier. It seems like decision trees are much useful. It's a shame after all the effort we invested into the tree growing. Fortunately, there is a way how to increase sensitivity of weak classifiers considerably. You prepare many of them and you take an average output as your test statistic. In fact, this is a general recipe, but we will discuss it just for the case of the decision trees. The average might and might not be weighted. If it is weighted, then one possibility is to use the individual classifier error rates to build the weights. The error rate is simply the rate of misclassification. The error rate epsilon is equal to the sum over i iterating over all misclassified events, w sub i, over a sum over i iterating over all events, w sub i. The weight assigned to the kth classifier could be alpha sub k is equal to beta times logarithm of 1 minus epsilon k over epsilon k with beta equal to 1 in the simplest case. Probably, the simplest way how to grow our forest is the so-called begging. We take the original training sample and we prepare many training samples out of it. Each of them is a result of sampling a fraction f of events from the original sample with a replacement. Sampling with a replacement means that we take the original sample we randomly choose an event and we copy the event to our new sample. Therefore, a concrete event might occur several times in the new sample. This way we prepare, say, 500 training samples. Each of them is used to grow one decision tree. The final test statistic is an average of outputs of the different trees t of x vector is equal to 1 over k going from 1 to n trees, alpha sub k, times sum over k going from 1 to n trees, alpha sub k, t sub k of x vector. 
We've learned that individual decision trees are sensitive to statistical fluctuations of the training Monte Carlo sample. Begging is a way how to average the statistical fluctuations out. A tiny bit more sophisticated way how to grow our forest is the random forest algorithm. It uses training samples prepared in the same way as with bagging. However, it grows the decision trees a bit differently. The difference is that at each splitting of a face space block, the random forest doesn't check all the discriminating variables. It uses just a randomly chosen subset of the discriminating variables. Finally, we are getting to the most advanced technique to grow the forest of decision trees. There are several ways how to accelerate the trees to the speed of light, but we will discuss the adaptive boost or adaboost only. Another largely used boosting algorithm is the gradient boost. As we've seen it for begging and random forests, the adaboost also prepares many training samples and it grows one decision tree per sample. However, it doesn't prepare the samples in a random way. First of all, it uses all the available Monte Carlo training events all the time and the different samples differ just in the event weights. Here's the algorithm. The first decision tree is trained on the original sample. Determine the error rate epsilon 1 of the first tree. Each event, misclassified by the tree, is assigned a new weight. W2i is equal to W sub 1i times e to the power of alpha 1. The event weights of the new sample are normalized so that their sum is the same as for the original sample. Build a decision tree on the updated sample. This tree misclassifies some other events and their weights are updated with the same algorithm. So the weights in sample k plus 1 are w sub k plus 1 i is equal to w sub k i times e to the power of alpha k times m k i all this times sum over i iterating over all events w k i divided by the sum over i iterating over all events w sub chi plus 1 i. The number m k i is 1 for events misclassified by the tree k and it is 0 for events classified correctly. Continue iteratively until you reach a predefined number of decision trees. The final test statistic is again given by the weighted average of the individual decision tree outputs. T of x vector is equal to 1 over sum over k going from 1 to the number of trees alpha sub k times a sum over k going from 1 to the number of trees alpha sub k t sub k of x vector. Note that the number of trees is a free parameter of the boosting algorithm. At some number of trees, the ADA boost starts to be overtrained. It is good to stop at that number. Typically, a few hundred trees are trained. Another free parameter of the ADA boost algorithm is beta. It is called the learning rate. Larger beta means more sensitivity to misclassified events, but lower robustness larger tendency for overtraining. Finally, let's stress the importance of a testing Monte Carlo sample. As for the neural networks, the testing sample is used to control overtraining, to determine the rock curve and to evaluate the expected distribution of the test statistic. The most important thing in the end, Boosted Decision Tree is abbreviated to BDT and you will hardly ever hear the full name. Its output is typically called BDT score or simply just BDT. 
BDT is a very popular multivariate method in particle physics. When going through CERN, you will hear BDT, BDT, BDT at each corner.